Why is it that every time I go off the air for a week's time to take a nice, easy vacation from this, even though I love doing this every single time, why is it that it's always the talk when I'm listening to sports radio? Football, 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 football. Let's talk about high school. Let's talk about college. Let's talk about the NFL. You know what gets me the most? We're in the middle of a middle of a pennant chase, and nobody's talking about it here in the American League Central. Nobody's talking about it. Nobody's talking about the fact that you know this is an interesting wild card chase, and nobody except for yours truly is going to be talking about the fifth line. Denny Schaefer is back on the airwaves in Toledo. He's been gone for nine years. Hey, Denny, how about picking a male co-host like me to do the show with you? I love Trish, but it's time for all Andy Alford right here. On your home for me, Clayfan23. Kick it up a notch. Nation, ready? Uh, good afternoon, everybody! Oh, I love you guys, and welcome in to this Monday, the 22nd of September edition, the last day of summer. Oh, I am the Alfred right here on your exclusive home for me, Clay Fan 2 3. I am your host, Andrew Alfred. Welcome you to the Man Cave Studios in East Toledo, Ohio. We have a lot to get into today. Of course, we're going to recap football, all the football happenings. We're also going to talk a little bit about yesterday, what we saw in Carolina at the RNC, RBC Center and also at Nationwide Arena with the Blue Jackets in action yesterday. And we'll talk about that as well, too. And we'll talk about what to look forward to this week and uh, this week on the program we're going to be on the program for the next three weeks, doing shows, getting you set up for the for the Major League Baseball playoff system. But and speaking of baseball, we're going to get into that right away as the Detroit Tigers took on a big, pivotal three-game series against the Kansas City Powder Blue Royals, and the Tigers take two or three out of Kansas City on Friday night. Justin Verlander getting a much-needed win. He wins, gets the win. He goes to 14 and 12 with a 4.68 ERA. As Detroit spanked Kansas City 10 to 1. Vargas gets the loss. He goes to 11 and 10 with a 3.59 ERA. Ian Kinsler, his 15th of the season, at Kaufman Stadium. Then on Saturday afternoon, Max Scherzer steps onto the hill and had a great performance as well too. He goes now to 17 and 5 with a 3.19 ERA. As the Tigers win 3 to 2, James Shields gets the loss. He goes to 14 and 8 with a 3.18 ERA. Torrey Hunter homered his 17th of the season. Joe Nathan his 33th save of the season, and it proved meticulous base running. You got to run, tap the bases if you're Kansas City. You have to touch the bases to honestly get close to win the game. And it, the Tigers won the appeal and helped them help their case out with that. But then yesterday, of course, Rick Porcello having some struggles on the hill. He could not get enough for the Tigers to win. As Jeremy Guthrie gets the win, he goes to 12 and 11 with a 4.28 ERA. As the Tigers lose 5 to 2 to Kansas City, Rick Porcello gets the loss. He goes now to 15 and 12 with a 3.31 ERA. Kinsler his 16th home run of the season. 
Holland his 43rd save of the season. Now Detroit will take a pivotal three-game series against the Chicago White Sox at Comerica Park. Tonight it will be Kyle Lobstein on the hill for Detroit. It will take on Bassett. Bassett on the hill at Comerica. 7.08 start time for that one. Tomorrow, Tuesday, yours truly will meet up with the beat writer for Beat the Shift, Nicholas Devera. He will be joining me on joining me at the ballpark. We'll be communicating back and forth on the ballpark as we will be at Comerica Park tomorrow night as the Tigers take on the the Chicago White Sox. It will be Carroll on the hill for the White Sox taking on David Price. And I'll get the first chance to take a look at David Price as a Tigers starting pitcher. And then Wednesday it will be Chris Sale taking on Justin Verlander in the C series finale. And then Detroit will then host the Minnesota Twins for a three-game series. The last six games of the season start tonight, and the Tigers can hypothetically clinch Wednesday or Thursday. We're looking at those two dates, Wednesday or Thursday, a possible Friday, if the Tigers lose a game. They have to win at least it's either take two of three or sweep Chicago to qualify to get the sweep to get to the to win the AL Central. And speaking of the of the Kansas City Royals, they're going to go to Cleveland. But Cleveland had a uh, interesting weekend as well too, losing in ten extra innings on Friday night, five to four. Crockett gets the loss for Cleveland. He's now four and one with a one point nine three ERA. Burton gets the win for Minnesota as he went gets the win three. He is now three and five with a four point five zero ERA. Arietta and Vargas homered four. Minnesota, Michael Brantley, his 20th of the season as the Tribe loses in extras 5-4. to four. T.J. House stepped onto the hill and he had a good performance on Saturday evening as he won 7-3 over the Twins. House now improves his record to 4-3 and three with a 3.43 ERA. May, for Minnesota gets the loss, he goes to 3-5 with a 3.8.39 ERA. Dozier, his 21st. Gomez, his 20th. Rosinski gets the save, his first of the season. And then Corey K. K. Kluber, strikeout Kluber, gets the win on Sunday. No home runs hit in the game as the tight as the Indians win 7-2. Kluber now goes to 17-9 with a 2.53 ERA. So Swarzak gets the loss. He goes to 3-2 with a 4.52 ERA. Now today, starting at 6.05, the concluding game of the suspended game between the, the Indians and the Royals. At Progressive Field, that will be. They'll start in the bottom of the tenth inning. The Tribe up four to three, with nobody out, and Mike Mustakas at the plate. That game starting at six. That the concluding game at six oh five. Then at seven oh five, it'll be Danny Duffy on the hill he'll take on Carl Carrasco. In that one, seven oh five start time. Ventura will take on Salazar. Two. Uh, that's a seven o'clock start time. And Wednesday will be Vargas. Versus Trevor Bauer. Now this is a pivotal game for the Tribe because we'll get into the AL the AL wild card standings here momentarily, and this is a big game for Kansas City as well too. These both these teams are looking for AL Central bids, and both of them are looking for wild card positions. So this is a pivotal series right here. It can knock Cleveland out, or it can knock Kansas City out. It could it, it could go either way. It could go either way to say the least. Uh, other notable scores yesterday in the major leagues. Before we get into the sen uh, into the standings, the Yankees were one five and two over Toronto, Washington two, the Miami Marlins one, Boston three, Baltimore two, Pittsburgh one, Milwaukee nothing. The Mets were one ten to two over the Atlanta Braves. Atlanta today fires their general manager Frank Wire. Uh, the White Sox win ten to five over the Tampa Bay Rays. Houston eight, Seattle three. The Dodgers were one eight to five over the Cubbies on the South Side. Texas two, eight, the Angels one. Oakland was a winner, eight to six over the Philadelphia Phillies. Colorado eight, Arizona three. The Dodgers were, like I said, were a winner, eight to five, over the Cubs. I don't know why I wrote that twice. San Diego was a winner, eight to two over the San Francisco Giants, and Seattle and the Cincinnati Reds were a winner, seven to two over St. Louis. So here's the teams that have clinched: Baltimore, New York, no, uh, Baltimore, Washington. The Dodgers, the Cardinals, the Angels, the Tigers are right there, and then you have your two wild card positions in seven and eight. And looking at the standings 
right now in the American League Central. Detroit leads the division. They're 86 and 69, six and four in their last ten. Kansas City is 84 and 70, a game and a half out, four and six in the last ten. Their elimination number for the Central is seven. The Indians are at 81 and 74, five games out of of the Central. Five and five in the last ten, three games away from elimination, and the White Sox have been eliminated. They're 71 and 84, 15 games out, six and four in their last 10. Looking at the wild card standing, Kansas City holds the second wild card position, but Oakland holds the first. Oakland is 85 and 70. They're a plus oh, they're half a game up in the wild card standings, four and six in their last 10. Kansas City at 84 and 70. Seattle is holding the third position right now. They are at 83 and 72, a game and a half out of a wild card position. Their their elimination number is seven. Cleveland is elimination is five at 81 and 74, and they're three and a half games out of a wild card position. So, pivotal series matchups this week. A possible clinch, a possible clinch in Detroit would be possible. And I think it can happen this week. It could happen Wednesday or Thursday. I doubt it will happen on Tuesday. But I'm up there to watch David Price on the Hill. And I, I hope you'll be able to join us on the program tomorrow at Comerica Park. Well, I guess it's time to talk about some football. Because that's what everybody's talking about. The NFL and the whole scandal situation with Roger Goodell, it's becoming a joke. It's becoming a joke. Roger Goodell should be fired as the as the president, CEO of the NFL. The owners should come together. They can do it. And he failed with the Ray Rice situation. He has failed time and time again. The acts and errors of the NFL cannot be standed anymore. I cannot stand it. I cannot. Oh. But one thing I can stand is this. There's a possibility, a strong possibility now, that Detroit can win the North Division. And now you're saying to me, oh, well, Andy, oh, how can they do that? When the, they just beat, they, they can only, they got to play through Green Bay and, and Chicago and Minnesota. Minnesota's a pushover. That team should be given to Toronto. In my opinion. But yesterday proved that they can do it. They can do it, and they can do it really, really well. As Detroit won 19 to 7 over the Green Bay Packers. Matthew Stafford won 22 for 34 for 246 yards with no no TD passes. Aaron Rodgers 16 for 27, 162 yards with one TD. Uh, Calvin Johnson six catches for 82 yards. And Brandon Starks for Green Bay. He had eight catches for 38 yards. The defense held up for the Lions, and that showed in that 19 to 7 victory for Detroit. And now Detroit will now play the Jets next weekend. J E T S Jets 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 in the Meadowlands. That'll be an interesting game to say the least. And speaking of games on the lake and big mistakes. Playbook. Let's talk about it, you guys. You had a possibility of beating Baltimore. You beat Baltimore, you have a great chance, a solid chance of getting better in the division. No way, right? A, a, a mediocre Joe Flacco. And you could get it done. It came down to the last play. A damn game, and you lose to a kicker, and you lose 23 to 21. Brian Hoyer, a good day, 19 to 25, 290 yards, one TD catch. Joe Flacco, 19 for 31, 217 yards, one TD. Vardenko, 18 catches, 18 carries, 91 yards, one TD. Cromwell for Cleveland, he had 11 carries for 55 yards and one TD. But like I said. It came down to the last play with four seconds left to go. You pin them back. It, it came down to early on in the in the in that the late stages of the fourth quarter when you were pinned in your own ten yard line and you could have taken the you could have taken the chance and you know all you needed was the first down. All you needed was the first down. You didn't need the punt. 
A punt is not a bad thing, but you don't need to punt, especially against a Raven defense and a Raven offense that's, you know, mediocre. They could have been 2-1. and 2-1, two and one, folks, but now they're 1-2. and two. Other notable scores in the NFL, San Diego going from the West Coast to the East Coast, being a good Buffalo team, 22-10. to 10. Dallas from 21 points down. And fighting on the sidelines. Win. They win. They win 34 to 31 against St. Louis. And then St. Louis fights on the sidelines. The players fight each other. Don't need to battle it on the gridiron. Oh. Washington. Philly coming back and winning again. It was a comeback day. A comeback day. As the Eagles win 37-34 over, Wash over Washington, the Washington Americans. The Giants were a winner 30-17 over the Houston Texans. New Orleans 20, Minnesota 9 stops the bleeding there for the losses for the, for the Saints. Cincinnati 33-7 winners over Tennessee. Indianapolis 44-17 winners over Jacksonville. Now Blake Boros will start next week in the game. New England 16 to 9 and if you looked at that game and you saw that oh my god you have got to be kidding me you have if you are a Patriots fan you are concerned cuz I am concerned too with Tom Brady that that was a poor performance by the offense and defensive line I'm sorry I know you won the damn game but it was a poor performance Arizona was a winner 23 to 14 over the San Francisco 49ers. Denver loses in overtime after a come trying to come back and win the game. Forced overtime. And guess what? Russell Wilson sent it just like he did up the field at the Meadowlands. He sent it up the field up the 12th man. And Seattle wins 26 to 20. Kansas City, 34-15 winners over the Miami Dolphins. Pittsburgh was a winner, 37-19 on the Sunday night game. That was a beatdown of a game. That is a Steelers type of game yesterday. And then Thursday night, you had Atlanta winning 56-14 over Tampa Bay, and that was a blowout. That's not what the NFL needed to see after the controversy that was happening all week. It's a blowout, 56-14. Now, tonight on Monday Night Football, it will be the J-E-T-S, just, 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 hosting the Chicago Bears, 8.30 start time on ESPN. Cleveland next week will be on a bye. So, Browns fans, take a nice, relaxing break for a little bit and discuss your quarterback situation and who to blame for it. I, I blame Mike Patton in the offensive line. We're not getting it done. We're not getting it done. If you have a comment about that, post it under the show. Or tweet me at all Andy Elford. That's at all A L L A N D Y A L F R E D. Now let's talk about the college game. Oh my god. After and I'm gonna use the same stuff I said last time. After we pulled the upset. We got destroyed. We got destroyed. Let me repeat. We got destroyed by a Wisconsin Badger team. Not one team, one player. Marvin. Good. 253 yards. 5-5. Five, 5. 5. 2 plus 3 equals 5. Touchdowns. 13 carries. 13 carries. Sixty-eight to seventeen. We stayed with them. 
Bowling Green stayed with Wisconsin for the first for the first quarter, and then all of a sudden, it just fell apart quicker than a Walmart sweater in a in a, in a Sears dryer. I tell you that much. Kanapke thirteen for twenty eight, one hundred and sixty three yards, one int. McCoy nine for sixteen, one hundred and twelve yards, one TD, one int. I don't know. I don't know. Two losses on the resume. You're you're. Good thing we start Mac play soon. It's a good thing we're gonna start Mac play soon. Cause I cannot take this anymore. Non-conference games are hurting Bowling Green's chances to win the Mac championship. Win the East, and then it. It's hard to imagine the feelings I'm feeling right now. Wisconsin, wow, it's 68, five TD. He broke. I'm, I gotta move on. I gotta move on for this subject because I'm getting upset. The only positive out of that is Michigan State destroying Eastern Michigan. They won 73 to 14. Cook went five for six for 83 yards, two TDs. I want no ints. Williams had 10 carries for 103 yards, three TDs. Bowling from Eastern Michigan had 115 yards passing, two TDs, one INT, one, completed 10 of 29. So that was a positive. And then you had the Thunderstorm Gate. Thunderstorms were in the area on Saturday night. Of course, the UT Rockets took on the Ball State Fighting Football Cardinals, Fighting Football Cardinals of Ball State. David Letterman's all of modern. The game did not wrap up till about 1.30 in the morning. And UT won 34-23. Woodside gets... The Woodside well, completed 13 of 22 for 152 yards. 1 TD, 1 INT. Mann completed 15 of 27 for 176 yards. 2 TDs, no INTs. Hunt had 12 carries, 142 yards. 1 TD in the game. UT looks good. UT looks really good. Other notable NCAA scores, of course, Kansas State loses to Auburn 20 to 20 to 14, and then Florida State. Oh my God! You leave Jameis Winston his pads and his gear. He gets his stuff on, and then Jimbo Fisher. That's a mess. I hate Jameis Winston. I'm going to admit that right now. I do not like the gentleman for what he said about about those people. What he has said in the past, and he he thinks he's Tim Tebow. He is not Tim Tebow. He is not even close. He thinks he's Peyton Manning. He's not even Peyton Manning. He is a mediocre quarterback, and you're headed to the Cleveland Browns next year, my friend. To be with Johnny Football. They're all laughing at me over here in the corner. I like it. Florida State winning in overtime over Clemson, 23-17. Oregon, 38-31 victors over Washington State. Florida getting their butts whipped by Alabama, 42-21. Florida is becoming a joke of a team. I'm sorry. Oklahoma beating up on West Virginia, 45-33. Texas A&M, 58-6 winners over SMU. Mississippi State pulling the upset and getting the win over LSU, 34-29. Indiana, another upset, beating Missouri. And that helps Bowling Green's chances for a better bowl game, my friends. It helps them with the bowl game situation. They could beat an Indiana team, and an Indiana team can beat Missouri. That helps Bowling Green's chances. Just look at it that way, folks. That was some positives out of the weekend. Miami, Florida loses to Nebraska 41-31. Iowa, a winner 24-20 over Pittsburgh. Northwestern, go Northwestern, win the game. 24-7 winners over Western Illinois. South Illinois loses to Purdue 35-13. Maryland 34 20 victors over the Orange of Syracuse. And then you had, like I said, Thunderstorm Gate. 
Utah versus Michigan. If I am a Michigan fan, panic attack! Panic attack! My only win is against against Appalachian State. Panic attack! One and two to start the season off. Actually, two and two. Two and two. Two and two. Should be three and one. Three and one. Better yet, you could have been one and three. <laughs> Rutgers was a winner, 31-24 over the Navy. Uh, Penn State was a winner, 48-7 over UMass. Minnesota, 24-7 winners over San Jose State. Illinois, 42. Texas State, 35. Akron was a loser, 17. Only putting up 17 points over Marshall, 48-17 losers to Marshall. Central Michigan, 10. Kansas, 4-24. Buffalo was a winner, 36-7 over Norfolk State. Cincinnati getting the win, 34-24 at Paul Brown Stadium over the Miami Red Hawks. Ohio 36-24 winners over Idaho. Murray State loses 14 to 45 over the Western Michigan Broncos, and NIU loses 14 to 52. Now, wrapping up the football scene, let's take a look at some high school scores in the Northwest Ohio region. Of course, it was Bowling Green losing to Perrysburg 25 to nothing. Let's see here. Yep, that's right. It was. You, it was a big blowout in Finley as Finley wins 48 to nothing over Clay. Gibsonburg 35, Cardinal Stritch 13, Central Catholic was a winner 41 to 21 over Whitmer. North loses to Toledo Christian 26 to nothing. Rossford 22, Genoa 45, Scott was a winner 52 to nothing over Jefferson. It was Springfield 28, Southview 35 as they won that one. St. Francis loses to St. John's 38-31. Archbold getting the big loss as they lose the start 27 to 7. Napoleon 35. The Northview Wildcats 17. White was a loser to Bellevue 41 to 20. Woodward was a loser to Northwest Can Canal Fulton 56 to nothing. Also, you got to look at some other scores as well too. Lima Senior was a winner 41 to nothing over Ross. You had Elmwood losing to Fostoria 47 to 27. Lake was a winner 49 to 7 over Otsego. You also had Bryan was a winner 28 to 41. A loser 28 41 to Delta. Uh, Eden was a winner 54 to 43 over Danbury. Set Liberty Center 40. Evergreen 20. Swanton was a loser to Wasion 32 to 27. Montpelier 40. Patrick Henry 22. You also had North Baltimore was a winner over Arcadia 47 to 6. You also had Port Clinton losing to Oak Harbor 31 to 14. Uh, games this week to look out for in in the high school rankings. It's the last week of September for this one. Very very heavily scheduled games going forward this week. As it will be Genoa taking on Eastwood, Southview taking on Anthony Wayne. Clay is home to play Whitmer. Bowling Green on the road to play Springfield. Bowser is at Holland. Hilltop will be hosting Cardinal Stritch. Central Catholic will take on Ross, Fremont Ross. South Northview will take on Maumee. You have Clyde taking on Rogers. Fostoria taking on Rossford. St. Francis hosting Lima Senior. St. John's on the road to play Finley. Vermillion on the road to take on Start. Woodward at Lakota. You also have Waite taking on Dover. And a couple other ones for you as well to look out for. Gibsonburg at Danbury. Lake hosting Woodmore. And Bryan on the road to take on Swanton. Those are some of the high school scores to look out. Games to look out for this upcoming week. Well, it's time to carry the flag. It's time to start a new revolution. After how the Jackets finished up last 2013-2014 season with a loss in the sixth game of the playoffs to the Pittsburgh Penguins in the first round of the playoffs, the Jackets are back in action. And they started yesterday afternoon. It was a split squad games yesterday in the NHL for the Blue Jackets. Group 1 went to Carolina and they picked up a win 4-3. Cam Atkinson with two goals. Riley Nash... Had a goal for the Carolina Hurricanes. 
in that in game one for the Jackets. In game two, group two, the Jackets win in overtime against the St. Louis Blues, four to three. Boom! Jenner, his first of the of the preseason. Alexander Weinberg, his first of the season. Latera and Weinstrom for St. Louis scored in that game. Other notable games yesterday: Washington was a winner, one to nothing over the Buffalo Sabers. There was a split squad between Calgary and Edmonton. Edmonton winning one group of Edmonton team wins three to one, and the other one loses to Calgary in Calgary, one to nothing. Tonight there will be two. There's actually two games going on today. One of them is the Ottawa Senators taking on the New York Islanders. Game 1 at 1.30 this afternoon. That game's just getting underway now. And Game 2 tonight at 6.30. Minnesota takes on Winnipeg. Detroit is on the road to take on Pittsburgh. The Devils are taking on the Rangers. Washington is in Philadelphia. And St. Louis is in Dallas. And Anaheim, both Anaheim and Colorado teams will be playing each other. Split squad for that one. And a split squad between Arizona and L.A. For that one as well too. Joey Logano winning at New Hampshire. Good for him. We're now in the chase at Dover next weekend for the final round of the Challengers Cup. Challenge round. Well, some other notable news for you today as well too happening. Uh, we are now less than a week away. Well, now we're less than four days away from the start of the Lynx at Fifth Third Field. You can play miniature golf on the outfield grass. A fifth third field. Tickets are fifteen dollars a piece, and you can sign up for a tee time by calling four one nine seven two five hens or visiting their website at mutthens.com. Also, gotta let you know about this too. Gotta let you know about this too. We are planning to be in Columbus for the opener. It has been made official. We will be in Columbus on the eleventh of October for the opener between the Jackets and the New York Rangers. We'll have a somewhat of a show going on we're planning on that it's in the early stages but we will also have our special walleye opener show and we'll preview the walleye season for that as well too next week on the programming we're going to have the nhl preview edition we're going to break down every team that is in the nhl see where they're going to fall this year who's making what playoff statement and who's going to be in who to say the least and also it's going to be an interesting season in the nhl Who's going to make the impact? And will the defending champion LA Kings be repeating as champions? We'll find out. But that is going to wrap it up for all Andy L for today. A recommendation for you tonight at 10 o'clock on NBC. The Blacklist with James Spader. Love the man. Love the program. Watch it. If you haven't watched it, it is on Netflix Season 1. I mean, you know what I was doing all weekend besides watching sports. But that is going to wrap it up for all Andy offered today. I hope you have a terrific evening. Go Tigers! Let's go Tribe! Keep the winning momentum going! We are the fifth line. And let's go Cavs! Cavs basketball is right around the corner. But I'm Andy Alford. I hope you have a terrific evening. Tomorrow on the program we'll break down the games that happened today. So until then, and we'll be on the road to America Park. Till then, I'm Andy Elford. I hope you have a good one. And the teams behind me, and to your team that you root at home for as well. Victory is sweetest when you have tasted defeat. Have a good night, everybody. And remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. I love you guys. Talk to you guys tomorrow. <laughs>
see you later. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow for another edition.